Like many Kansans, Nathan Lee of Coates makes his living on the land. Here he tells how the use of fire to control cedars and woody invasion will help ensure that his family ranch remains productive for future generations. My family's been here uh, since 1916. Uh, I'm the fourth generation my, and my son is the fifth. Something our family's noticed in the last uh, 10 or 20 years is how the absence of fire out here, on, in, uh, particularly in Barber County, uh, has led to a, a, a rapid increase in the amount of woody species. Um, we've seen <coughs> uh, particular problems with the eastern red cedar, but also with the, the sandhill plums and sagebrush, uh, elm and hackberry trees. One of the things we've learned about cedar trees is that they aren't very conducive to, to uh, allow water to get into the soil profile. Um, cedar trees have a large surface area, much like any tree, and a lot of the rains that we have in Kansas here in our area are less than a half to less than a quarter of an inch, very, very small rains. That water never gets to the soil because of the huge surface area of, of these canopies of trees. It's also important to understand the, the role of uh, uh, transpiration and, and evaporation and uh, the water use that, that goes on with cedar trees. Um, uh, we hope to bring back a lot of the smaller springs. Those springs will be available for, for uh, use by, by livestock for drinking water, but also to increase the groundwater levels so that the grass resource can come back and, and become uh, fuller and more, more useful uh, for ranching operations. One cedar tree can use 30 to 40 gallons of water a day, and when you multiply that times several tens of thousands of trees in, in as little an area as, a, say, a, a half section, 320 acres, you're talking about millions and millions of gallons of water <clears throat> on an annual basis and uh, that's a substantial benefit to the ranching industry. Uh, we've started an aggressive program of, of trying to cut and burn uh, about 1,500 acres a year and, and we'd like to repeat that process so that, so that no patch of land uh, goes for more than five to eight years at the outside without having a fire run through it. And uh, in this way we hope to uh, increase the amount of, of prairie ecosystem, riparian areas, and to decrease the amount of predator perches, uh, particularly in the form of cedar trees, and, uh, and of course to, to, to maintain an economically sustainable system of grazing lands for uh, the future of our family. Um, in order to gain the most uh, production efficiency uh, in, our, in our annual fires, we've pooled together with a team of neighbors, say four or five in this region that encompasses about uh, 15,000 acres in this part of the township, and in the southern part of the county, uh, it's closer to 50,000 acres. We pool our resources together and use teams of 10 or 20 people and up to 10 or 15 vehicles to, to, to consolidate large burns that uh, uh, more efficiently um, utilize the, the tool of fire uh, in a safe manner and, uh, and, and cheapen the cost per acre for all of us that are involved in it. This year we burned about 4,000 acres with area neighbors. Uh, we did that over two successive burns that were, that were uh, next to each other. Uh, but the time involved uh, with that kind of endeavor is, is very substantial. We spend the whole year in advance of that fire uh, preparing for the day that we're going to strike that match. Uh, we might spend a couple weeks with a, with a rotary mower mowing fence lines and fire guards. We might spend some time with a chainsaw or a skid steer loader uh, to remove brush from fire lines so we don't have problems down the road. We, we, we change our grazing patterns up to a year in advance so that we know that we have adequate fuel where we want to burn and, and, and a lesser amount of fuel where we don't want to burn. Uh, we have to, to uh, prepare fire maps and have phone converse, conversations and, and a lot of email uh, uh, type meetings with our neighbors to, 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 work, out the, to work out the details. Uh, the amount of effort that we spend getting ready to burn and the amount of planning and preparation uh, is, is, has become a more more substantial part of our operation <clears throat> in addition to just the, the normal uh, annual activities that we, that we normally take, take part in. Judy Lee, Nathan's mother, is no stranger to the hard work of prescribed burning. Along with her husband Bill, the family works together to make sure that all is ready. There are very few days, if you look at the big picture, very few days when your burning conditions are ideal 
and that you feel that you have a controllable situation, and that's our situation is controllable. That's our main word here. So much of the burn that we do every spring, we do a tremendous amount of pre pre-burn preparation because when the time is right, you can't still be out there doing your fire guard. You have about six weeks in the springtime to get this done. You have to have the proper wind, you have to have the proper humidity, and you have to have your people who are helping you available to help that day. So you watch very carefully everything having to do with the weather and your neighbors so that you can pull this thing off and literally the fire starts you know, at the spur of the moment sometimes, but there's a tremendous amount of pre-plan. It's all been done ahead of time. It has to be because you can't do it at the last minute. Uh, I would say we spend about two months uh, a year getting ready for our annual burn. Nathan's son Landon has his own reasons for wanting to remove cedars. And I like burning because um, it gets rid of a lot of the cedar trees and we have more access to a lot of this land. It's not just looking at trees all day and like one of our ponds out in our pasture was just completely swamped with cedar trees but then we burned it and now you can actually see the pond and you can actually kind of fish in there and that's one of my hobbies is fishing. Positive changes for prairie wildlife have been an important spin-off of tree removal on the Lee Ranch. Um, I, I've enjoyed being able to see the lesser prairie chicken out on the prairie and, and hear his call and, and see them fly around a little bit. Uh, we're not where we want to be yet, but, but we will be very soon. There's no question that the hard work of burning over a number of years has been worth it to the Lees. We've seen a dramatic increase on our place and, and, the adjoin, and on, on the adjoining places in, in this area. Uh, we, we've probably gained 40 or 50 years uh, moving from a, from a succession of brush and trees back to uh, the original system that, uh, that nature intended which, in this area, which is a, a prairie ecosystem. And uh, it's been very interesting and, and very much a learning process uh, to facilitate that, to facilitate that uh, that move back to uh, say the mid-1900s as far as the, the amount of trees and brush that are present in the in the pastures. Uh, I've seen firsthand areas that used to be able to drive a pickup across in two-wheel drive. Now you've got to have it in four-wheel drive or even get a tractor and chain out there to get you through the, 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 the swampy areas. You just can't travel through that. The amount of water that we're, that we're getting back to our prairie is, is just amazing. That's water that's available for livestock. It's water that's available to grow more grass. We can, we can convert grass into money and into, into edible food, but we can't do anything with cedar trees. That there's, just, there's just not that much use for them in the, in the, in the ranching industry anyway. In order for us to, to stay here for another 100 years or 200 years and, and ensure that my son and his children will have a place to stay and to live and to raise their families, we're going to have to bring fire back into the equation. We're going to have to, to use it to, to work the succession backwards from a woodlands back to a prairie ecosystem where the ranching industry and production of food and fiber uh, can, take, can take place as it should be. Fire, an important tool in preserving the prairie. For Nathan Lee and other ranchers like him, it's a springtime way of life that keeps the land in balance. I'm Mike Blair for Kansas Wildlife and Parks.